In this video, we're going to take a look at the first section of the main toolbar right up through the reference coordinate system, which you can see me highlighting here. Now, I'm going to start off all the way over on the left-hand side. Now, in general, Logan, why do we have a toolbar? Well, I mean, you can boil it down to uh, what I would like to call convenient redundancy. That is to say, functions that already exist in Rails and UI, but are more easily accessible if they're laid out right in front of you. That's right. So a lot of these commands you will already be able to find somewhere in one of the menus, and it'll be fairly obvious with some of the first ones we have new, which will create a new map. So if I click on it, we can choose additive or subtractive. We have open, which we can use to open an existing map. We have this little tiny skinny button, and this is for all recent maps. I actually forget this is here a lot, but it is nice and convenient if you remember it. It's uh, as opposed to going to file and choosing recent. Uh, to the right of this, we have the ability to save a current level, so we can just save what we're working on, or we can save all levels if we've streamed in several different levels and we want to save everything. To the right of this, we have undo and redo, which currently I haven't really done anything, so there's nothing to undo or redo, but I'm sure you understand generally how those work. Just a tip, a word to the wise, sometimes the undo functionality doesn't register every single action you do, so uh, just be aware of that. It is not uh, without a couple of flaws here and there. Next, we have the distance to far clipping plane. Now, in order to really show this off, I am going to open up a level, so I get to show the uh, recent drop-down. And no, I don't want to save any changes. We'll give this just a second to load in. And let's fly around this level for just a moment. Now, this is a fairly small level, so it might be a little bit tricky to show you this far clipping plane. But if I drag this to the left, there we go. You see a wall appears in the distance. And I'll go ahead and maximize this viewport so you can really see that. It looks like our level has ceased to exist beyond this point. And as I move forward, it kind of comes into view the closer we get to it. And what that is is a clipping plane which will stop the renderability of anything that is further beyond that plane. It's a great way to uh, optimize your viewport so that if you have a very large level that is slowing you down, you can make stuff beyond that plane disappear. All right, to the right of this, we have prevent... The, I'm just going to read the tooltip because I love how, how descriptive it is. Prevent the mouse from uh, being able to move, rotate, or scale actors. Only selection will be allowed. And it's really cool if we activate this and we select, say, this light. Uh, if I try to move this light, the widget will move. I can put the widget wherever I want to. I can slide it up here. I can shoot it way up into the air. But notice the light doesn't move at all. If I click the light again, the widget snaps right back to it. This is a critical button on the toolbar to remember. Memorize it, figure out where it is, and before you ever show your map to anybody, make sure you switch it on, because if you have built your lighting, and maybe building your lighting took, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, who knows how long it took, and you don't want to sit through that again, make sure you have this activated so that you don't accidentally nudge a light or a static mesh and completely break your lighting system and have to then go through and rebuild it. So that's a quick look at that button. Now, to the right of this, we have show or use the widget. So if we switch this off, the widget will disappear. If we turn this back on, the widget appears. Very cut and dry, very simple. Uh, next to this, we have what type of widget we would like to use. We have the translation widget for moving objects around. We have the rotation widget for rotating objects. We have the scaling widget which uh, you know, make objects bigger or smaller. And we have the non-uniform scaling widget. And this is, as far as I know, this is the only place where you can get to this widget. And it is so cool, I'm going to show it to you. Uh, so the default scaling widget will scale an object uniformly. So I can take this little tank over here and I can make it small or I can make it big. But what if I want to stretch it out? Well, I can use the non-uniform scaling widget and I can scale this tank on one axis, and make it really, really short, make it look like a 40-gallon drum or something, or make it tall or flatten it out, because I'm scaling on singular axes as opposed to all axes at once. You can also scale on two axes at one time by putting your mouse right here on this little tiny flag right in between two of the axes. And, of course, scaling in all three, you might as well just go back to the uh, uniform scaling widget. So there's a quick look at that. Now, next to this, we have the reference coordinate system. Now, this is uh, going to be most apparent if we take this object and rotate it. So I'm going to switch over to the rotation widget, and we'll rotate this over in the uh, y-axis. Now, if I go back to the translation widget, take a look at how my translation widget is oriented. Uh, the red x-axis no longer necessarily points down the x-axis, which we can see in the lower left-hand corner of the viewport. It kind of points out into space at this funny angle, but we can use it to slide our tank 
in the, along the orientation that it uh, that has been turned. This is because we're using the local rotation axis of this tank. If we switch back from local to world, now our axes are following the world coordinates, so x is true x-axis, y is true y, and z goes straight up and down. So you can switch between local and world if you need to move an object along its own local-oriented axis. That's really all there is to it. And that takes care of all of the uh, commands available to us in the first section of the toolbar.